Internet world, we're back. I'm Michael. That's Leroy. Mm -hmm. We're the uh, Nerdy by Nature Productions. We try and channel. Mm -hmm. um, snap. Got to wait another 50 seconds. Um, we're back. For somebody who like directs, who directs shows, I feel like you don't have a concept of a minute down that well sometimes. Time is an imaginary construct that humans have created to cage ourselves, Michael. When okay. you take a look at what we've created and break out of it, then you will free uh -huh. your mind. That's how people okay. on the internet sound. That's why I got off Twitter. Okay. <laughs> no, fair enough. Anyway, uh, that's Michael. I'm Leroy. Uh, we're back in 2024. Mm -hmm. um, have we done a press play in 2024? Yes, maybe like two weeks ago. We, we we haven't done a live one yet, but we did do a tape one. Yeah, 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 yeah. What was that about? I have no idea what it was about. I know you're going to ask me, couldn't tell you. But I know we did one because I remember putting it up. Anyway. To the YouTube um, page. Let's see. To the YouTube. Uh, so while Michael is looking, I thought I would bring up a very good topic because um, and it's not just. So Baby Toshiro had made, had made a comment on the page about negativity and that everything on everything on the internet and youtubers is about negativity and like for likes and i was like well we'll never be big streaming because wars. say what streaming wars part two ah yeah, that's right but i was basically two, week, two weeks ago yeah yep forgot that quickly yep just like we'll all forget about uh paramount plus like we did quibi um So it just got me thinking when when Baby Tashiro said it, a lot of people do have negative comments and you see the thumbnails and it's always about shock and awe and, you know, who doesn't like this? And, you know, people make it their personality. And it made me think we're kind of a positive channel. And I was like, for 2024, and I was talking about this with Barrett Gruber what like you know people do their new year's resolutions i don't do resolutions because I, I don't plan to be a better person um <laughs> but i was thinking you're already here folks heard it here hot mm -hmm. takes but i was thinking what are you excited for in 2024 nerd wise what is the things that like you're it's a whole new year what are you looking forward to what are the things whether it's a, a, a an event a physical thing, an experience. What is it that you're looking forward to in 2024? And I was like, let's share that with everybody and let's get everybody else's opinion. 2024 is here. What are the things that you're looking forward to? So uh, your top three things. And I, Michael, I wanted you to kick this off and go first because you have a very different outlook on life than I do at, ter at different times for various reasons and i wanted to know what is the thing you're looking and not not in order like your number one this is just the first one what's one something that you're looking forward to in 2024 that you're like that got me excited i can't wait for that date all right uh rebel moon scar giver yeah that's a lie oh i, I just want to see what you were going to say okay I was oh, also also uh, friend of the show brock he liked it He's no longer a friend of the show. <laughs> Sorry. You got to get those people out of your life. That's a cancer. That's, what, that's, that's only going to bring you down. Because he texted me and was asking me about what movie me and Barrett were talking about on the podcast. And I was like, I don't know. Like, we talked about a few movies. We talked about, you know, what the nerd channel, you know, what we're going to be doing in 2024. And I was like, I couldn't remember. And I was like, we talked about Polite Society. We talked about... Uh, uh, what's the Mahershala Ali movie? Leave the world behind. And then uh -huh. I was like, Rebel Moon. He's like, that's it, Rebel Moon. And I was like, yeah, that's not a good film. He's like, I liked it. I was like, ooh, sir, that was not a good film. But and go keeping, ahead. And keeping with the spirit of a positive channel to each his own. I'm glad. I'm glad somebody found it. Uh, liked it. That's good for them. Um, but no, seriously, for me, if I had to pick one thing, like I, I was trying to figure out if I should be like more holistic or more tangible specific no, more specific but i was going to say video games but i 
I'm excited for where video games are going to go this year, specifically, mm -hmm. hopefully with the Switch 2. Um, I think Nintendo has proven time and time again, once they said, hey, we're no longer going to try and compete with Sony and Nintendo or Sony and Xbox, mm -hmm. we're going to do our own Graphically. Thing. Graphically. Yeah. Yeah, so hey, we're not yeah, we're not yeah. trying to be a powerhouse. We're, we'll we'll make a Wii and we'll sell millions of those and people will love it. We'll sell a Wii U, not as good, but you know what? We'll bounce back with the Switch and sell a hundred plus million units. But, they, um, so, but here's the thing: they couldn't have made the Switch without making the Wii U. You think so? I think that they could not have made that jump from the Wii to the Switch without the Wii U in the middle. Interesting. I, I I don't think I th I think it's one of those things where like in order for them to get to that level, you you had to make that thing and then learn from it. And I think that is what made them say the Wii U was like, we're not going to compete with these two. We're going to do our own thing. I think that was the beginning of the. Well, no, the Wii made them do that. See, I. I the, the Wii just, was so underpowered compared to what the other two things it, were. It was, but the Wii was one of the best-selling consoles. Sure, yeah. And and and, and <clears throat> I think the <clears throat> the like the Switch is basically just the Wii and the Wii U made together. Does that make sense? I uh, sure. in, in my opinion, in, I, in okay. my opinion. I, okay. I, and so, in order to get to the Switch, they had to make the Wii U. In my okay. opinion, but I could be wrong. Internet, tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me I'm, I'm dead wrong. Um, but yeah, for me, what, whatever the Switch 2 is going to be, because we nobody's seen it. I mean, no, not few people have seen it, I'll say. People um, people say they have seen it. Right. But, but there's I, no very Let me a better way to say that is to say few people have seen it. It hasn't yes, been seen by no, the masses. Yeah, there are no verified reports of what it looks like, what it, yeah. I mean, we, we have so many, we don't know what the price is. We don't know what the form factor is. We don't know. Yeah, we don't know if it's backwards, back, backwards compatible. Yeah, we don't know if it's going to play Switch games or not, or if it's going to carry over for the Nintendo catalog. But I'm just excited for what it is. In, in my mind, I hope it is a more powerful Switch. Um, so many people are jumping on the mobile computer bandwagon now, whether it's a Steam Deck, whether it's the Asus. Uh, I don't know who I don't know who makes what, but the ROG Ally. I am Neo. I, I am yes. Neo. So many different people are making different things now, and. I think it kind of started with the switch and people said, Hey, here we go. I, I think there's a potential for them to iterate on that. And they've proven that they can be underpowered and still sell millions of units. So we don't have to have something as powerful as the Xbox series X or PlayStation five in the palm of our hand and still have great content. I want to see what the new Mario is going to be. I want to see what the next Zelda is going to be. Granted, we just got a Zelda last year. So, yeah. It'll probably be a minute before we see a Zelda, but we haven't had a Mario, a 3D Mario since 2013 when the Switch came out. So let me see what I this think, new Mario is. I, I would love to just see a Metroid game that's not a 2D scroller. Metro 4. I mean, it's been announced. It was announced, and then it went back to the drawing board and got reannounced yep. again. So, I mean, it, it, it would be nice to see it. And supposedly there's a movie in the works, so... For what, Metroid? Get you, yep. Hmm, interesting. Okay. I knew about the Zelda stuff they were doing. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Um, Nintendo, get your weight up. So for me, I would say that. And okay. just overall, just where gaming is going to go. Because we have these powerful consoles. I still don't think we've hit the benchmark of what these things can do. No. Um, the, uh, games are looking Agreed. more and more realistic and photorealistic and everything. But I think we have to get away from just realistic graphics and give us like ease of use and just super fast speeds and loading speeds like with the ssds in both the series x and the playstation 5 let's let's lean on that more i don't i don't know what that means and what that means in terms of gameplay but just the idea of being able to go anywhere in open world like we had with spider-man 2 you can go anywhere fast travel and it takes like two seconds let's see more of that stuff now let me ask you are you looking you mentioned the switch 2 which would be a we don't know if that's a refresh of the original switch or if that's a whole new console with a whole new ecosystem where and but here's my question are you looking forward to the refreshes of the xbox series x and the ps5 because those are rumored there's so you no mean hard, like like a, like a pro version or something mm -hmm, a pro version or a slim or like because the the slim will probably be the same console just It'll be you more mean compact. A slim for the Xbox or whatever? 
Either one. They got it. They got. They got it for them for the PS5. Yeah, that just what I'm saying. Like a refresh, like a pro, a slim for the Xbox. Like the con, because we're mid. We're mid console generation, and I'm. Are you excited about those? Not for those. Like I don't really care about a refresh. Like I got the system that I need. Just keep making games for that. I don't need a smaller, more okay. compact version. Give me a PlayStation Six and an Xbox. Series X2 or whatever it's going to be called four okay. or five years down the line. For me, the Switch 2 is exciting because I don't think it's going to be... There was rumors of a Switch Pro. I think we were past that. There were credible rumors that a Switch Pro was coming for whatever reason that didn't get announced. Instead, we got a Switch OLED. I think we're past the Switch Pro. Now we're on to whatever the next generation of Nintendo console is going to be. Let that be a Switch 2 or a Super Switch. I want to okay. see new content, new gameplay, new gameplay mechanics, all that kind of stuff. So I don't, Yeah, I don't need a refresh. Give me a whole new system. All right. Um, so yours is gaming in general. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I could get more specific because I'm I'm excited for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth okay. Part Two, which is like the end of February. I'm really excited for that game, and everybody okay. knows who, who 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 have followed us for years, even on our other channel, how much I hated the original PlayStation Seven Final Fantasy. I'll to talk mad shit about it. Original PlayStation Final Fantasy Seven game. Um, and people have seen the evolution of how much I love the remake. And then when I played spent three hundred dollars, I did that trophy <laughs> or that that uh, figure is still in the box, just chilling. Um, wow, really? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I don't know where I would put it. Um, Fair enough. But um, I have since replayed the original Final Fantasy VII, and I enjoyed it a lot. I think when I first played it, I was probably you know how people will hype stuff up, so eventually you kind of get on the other side of it, even though mm -hmm. it is good. I'd be like, man, I don't care about no Final Fantasy VII. This game sucks. I was dumb. Yep. I'll admit mm -hmm. that. Um, I still prefer Final Fantasy VI over Final Fantasy VII for me, but I, I, have, I do enjoy Final Fantasy VII, the original now. Okay. Um, I'm going to piggyback off of yours. My... Uh... I was looking for the rest of them, but I don't see them, so I'll just use this one. Um, oh, okay. So, follow along with me because I, I'm, is that I'm, just I couldn't tell because of the glare. Just real quick, is that like just the original, or is that like subsistence or subsistence? This is subsistence. I have the original okay. down here okay. somewhere. I was trying to find gotcha. it, and um, I have all of them, um, but. I'm going to go down a little rabbit hole only because I'm excited for it, for the remake. I'm so scared too, partly. For different reasons. Okay. So Capcom, so I, I have been one of the people who has poo-pooed remakes. Like I, I've always been like, let's do something new. Let's push the envelope of gaming. Let's stop remaking these old games, especially ones that just came out because – you can still play them on your old systems, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, I'm a Metal Gear Solid fan. However, comma, <clears throat> five or Phantom Pain was to me okay. It wasn't like, like you talked about Snake Eater being the game. For me, it was one and two. Um, I loved, I did enjoy four. I'm hoping. I still haven't played five yet. Huh? I still haven't played you don't five need to. yet. You know what I Okay. Um, I feel like it's okay. Like it. I I like certain parts about it, but it's an unfinished game, and it left okay. a bad taste in my mouth because of this company right here. I say all that to say, with the remake coming out, the master, um, the what's it called, the master collection, whatever. I almost said Master Chief Collection, but with the Wait, new are, collection are we, coming are we out, talking about the collection that's out? Or are we talking about Delta? The, the the collection that's out, all like all basically Konami getting back into gaming. Mm -hmm. I'm my prediction and what I'm excited for is Konami's going to restart Metal Gear. 
Hmm. I don't know. I don't know if they're going to reboot and do a remake of the first Metal Gear and then like kind of like what Dead Space and Capcom did with Resident Evil, or they're going to try to go a village route. You know, when Resident Evil uh, came back, because um, what was before Village? Uh, seven. Seven. That so I don't Baker, in the Baker Mansion. Yeah, I don't know how they're going to do this, but with all of this Metal Gear Solid news coming out. And Silent Hill, them bringing that back and redoing. I I feel like Konami's dipping their toe in mm -hmm. to get back into the Metal Gear Solid. And we know there's a movie in the works. People have been trying to get Man, that off the ground. They talk about that it's 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 in the development phase. I don't know if they do it. Now, if they do it. I feel like the last thing I heard was whoever the dude was, it Jordan Voigt or whatever his name is. Was upset mm -hmm. that uh, Black Widow had the same costume as like the big boss. Yeah, yeah, we, we, that, was last, that was the last thing that. I heard. Now, here's the thing: I'm gonna be honest with you. If you do it, if you do a movie, guess who? Guess who I want to be Snake? Snake? Huh? Yep. Guess um, who I want to be Snake? Wyatt Russell. My nigga. Was that was I right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's, see, when we hear, when we hear, <laughs> yeah. we hear. Uh-huh. Damn. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, Wyatt Russell. That's why I want to do it. Okay. But anyway, i I'm excited for 2024 because I think this is the year Konami announces not getting back into business with this dude. I have no idea what uh, you're pointing to. <laughs> I thought I had the Death Stranding album. Oh, okay. I forgot that <laughs> Got I, it. I took it down. One of the toddlers almost ate the freaking album, and I was like, let me put this up. But I, I had yeah. it up right here. But anyway, I don't think they're ever going to get back into business with Konami, with uh, Kojima. I think Kojima's moved on. And, and, and Oh, yeah. Kojima got his own studio. He's like, y'all can't get me back. More, more power to him. But I think yeah. this is the year Konami announces we're back in the Metal Gear business, and we're going to restart or at least – have another game in that universe, a brand new game. So I'm down for it. That that's and I uh, honestly I as much of a bad taste in my mouth that five left me and how they how they dealt with Kojima, I would I would like to see that story going forward. So that's that's where that was that is my big one because I I, I feel like and again I said this in the beginning hating on the remakes the remasters and then i played capcom kind of got me with the resident evil i played two i was like this is pretty good mm -hmm. and then i played dead space and i was like oh shit this is what you yeah, wanted um Callisto protocol to be i wanted Callisto protocol to be at least this good I wanted sure. it to be better than Dead Space. I, I wanted it to be better than Dead Space. I did. Um, and then I was like, oh shit, this is what the like this is a remake. Now I haven't played Resident Evil 4 yet, but this oh, one people, I, people I, love that. Space, I mean it was up for game of the year. Yeah. So it got me thinking, Konami's doing all these remasters and re and and I wonder if they're gonna try to reboot the series. And I'm all for it because I really love that series. I'd like to see what what they could do with it in this day and age. When you say that they're dipping their toe in, I kind of I agree with you, but I wish they would just put the whole body in because I feel like they need to put the resources behind it. I, I like the idea that they're trying to get back to Metal Gear, but it does kind of leave a bad taste in my mouth with how they released the first new collection or whatever where it didn't have as many features as people thought that it should have for a bundle collection. And it kind of seems like they, they, they were kind of skimpy with how they did it. And I kind of wish they would put all the research like, no, if we're going to do this, let's do it right. Now, here's the thing. You've brought up on several occasions. Konami has not been in gaming for a while. So here's here's where I wonder with the collection, if it was let's dip our toe in to see if we can do this. Like, let's start small. Because I, th I feel like you have to start small 
before you announce we're getting back into the Metal Gear Solid business because of how bad of a taste they left in people's mouths. And I was seeing if his name was on here. Uh, Kojima? Yeah. So it's not on this one. Oh, really? Okay. I thought this thought it's usually on the cover. It's it's usually so it's usually on the cover a, a, a Hideo Kojima game, and I was looking to see if it was on here. Um, it's not, but it's one of those things where, man, like, it's just I feel as if they, I like if they're gonna start small to build up to that because I would hate for them to announce we're back Mm -hmm. and then they released it. And you're like, Oh, if y'all are back, this is trash. You said like, I'd rather them build up like, Hey man, screw up silent Hill first. (laughs) Like screw up silent Hill, then get this right. But that's just me. I bet. So you might be in the minority on that because people are really expecting big things from silent Hill too remake or whatever I, and, I, and i'm not saying that they will i'm not saying i'm not saying they will i'm not saying i want them to i'm saying i like silent hill i love this shit it's sure. just like so 2024 for me is i think the year we get some big announcements from konami and we see some things that we haven't seen before and I think this is the year they announced, maybe not in the beginning of the year, maybe not in the middle, but I think this is the year Konami says, hey, man, they flash a Metal Gear Solid 1 reboot or a Metal Gear Solid, not a remaster, like we're all in and they're redoing starting from scratch. And that's what I would like to see. Okay. And that that really, and honestly, it really has me excited because as the world changes, as geopolitical things happen, I'd like to see a new auteur step up and say, I can tackle this or a team to tackle this because we're looking for the next Neil Druckmann. We're looking for the next Hideo Kojima. We're looking for the next Todd Howard. And in order for that to happen, you have to make your mark on something. And I wouldn't mind seeing it on Metal Gear Solid. Okay. The floor Back is yours. Sir. Okay. Yep. The floor um, is yours. I'm going to move to movies now. And what I am hopeful for is more studios exercising patience with explain movie, with movie releases and how they announce movies. Specifically, I'm talking about Marvel Studios. Uh, okay. I am I am very excited that they decided, you know what, let's just release one movie right now and mm-hmm. figure out what we're doing. Um, I'm excited that that we're just getting dead. At first, I was like, we're only getting one movie this year because I've been conditioned to you know, expect three or four movies. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I'm excited to just get Deadpool. Let that, mm-hmm. let that be what it's going to be. Let, let, let's see if it's going to reboot the franchise or something or do something with X-Men or bring them in. Who knows? So many rumors about what it can be and who's in it and all that stuff. I but know what I want it to be. The the big wigs, Kevin Feige and all his people, I don't know if this was a call from on high from Iger saying, hey, y'all need to get your shit together or whatever. Kevin Feige realized, yo, we're, we're maybe doing too much. But let's have one movie. Let's have them go to their summit retreat or whatever and figure out what this phase five is going to well, be. Well, remember, they already went to their retreat. They yeah, went to their retreat go, last year. And, and, and so go do another one. And really batten this stuff down. Figure out what you're going to do, because say what you want. We we did a uh, press play about Phase Four, whether or not we liked it or not, and where it was going. Whether you like it or don't like it, I think everybody can agree it was definitely divisive compared to the other three phases so far. They it is not it is easy to say it is not as beloved as the other three phases. Um, it is not, and 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 it's not as profitable. It's True. the first time True. that they lost money. Yeah. Um, there were so many different tendrils out there about where these characters are going to go. You know, who knows what's going on with the Eternals? We still had this, uh, was it Bahama or whatever the, the uh, guy is that's stuck in the planet? 
mm-hmm. had his hand out. I was like, well, what's going on with that? I don't know. Um, when, when are we going to see Blade? When is that coming? So let them figure stuff out and let's get back to quant- quality over quantity. Um, I think in, in terms of TV shows, the only one we know coming out is Agatha, right? Now, oh, I don't know if that comes out this year, but I know Agatha still in, is, is in the works. Armor Wars is now a movie. Um, there, uh, there's a bunch of them that have been announced but not casted. So like World of Wakanda, a lot of that stuff, we don't know what all, but they've put a hold on everything. So I, I, I'm with you on that. I'm I'm actually excited that they are doing that because personally I liked a lot of the stuff that Phase 4 did and gave us. I personally like what if was amazing. What if was just once again Abu watch what if she was I can't wait to buy more action figures. Of Haley Atwell, this was I loved everything about her character, and then the the new character, um, I cannot remember her name. Um, Kakori, I real huh? Was it Kakori? I I that's why I said I I see her face. I ain't trying to pronounce it right now. Um, I loved what if. Um, I'm I'm right now going through Echo. Really enjoying that. Like I, I really I like phase four, but I understand a lot of people don't. So I'm excited to see what they do when they retool. Um, if they're gonna keep King, I'm all for Coleman Domingo stepping into that role from Fear the Walking Dead. Okay. I'm all for that. Um, but then again, I'm gonna be honest with you, I, I don't I have faith that they will write the ship. I really do. Um, but if they don't, I'm cool. Here's the thing. I'm cool with them not writing the ship because I got 10 years of this stuff that I never thought I would see in my lifetime. Mm-hmm. To me, the Marvel said, and this is going to be wild that I'm going to say this. Growing up, I thought having a black president was more attainable than seeing the Marvel Cinematic Universe come to fruition. (laughs) That's how wild this is. So for the 10 years that Marvel was firing on all cylinders, the fact that we got Black Panther movie, the fact that I got to see Captain America fight Iron Man, the fact that there was a Hulk, a Thor, we got to see the Avengers assembled. It's something I never thought as a fan, I'm wearing the shirt, possible. So I mean, to be fair, that did happen first. Barack Obama was elected before we had the Avengers movie. Boom. So, so that did happen like you wanted or like you predicted it could have happened. Yeah. But it's just one of those things where I'm like, I'm cool with it. If it mm-hmm. dies, it dies. Things die. People die. Plants die. It, <laughs> if it doesn't work, it this stuff goes in cycles. So I'm not I'm OK with it. So I'm with you on that one. Um, th- I didn't want to do movies in general, but there is one film that I'm really excited for. And it's, I think it's one that's on nobody's radar and only because I loved the first one. And it's once again, I'm hope it's two movies. One that I know is, is possibly going to come out this year. One that is still in the planning stages and their sequels. And it could be very divisive. It probably will be very divisive. Both of these sequels. One is Heat, and the other one is Gladiator 2. They're making a Heat sequel? They're, so here's the thing. Michael Mann with, I'm trying to remember, I could just look it up. Michael Mann helped write and pen a sequel to Heat. It was a book. Okay. And <clears throat> everybody had talked about, um, so it's from HarperCollins. Uh, it's called 
it's hold on. Uh, hold on. Here it is. So it basically jumps back and forth between what happens after heat and a prequel. Adam Driver is supposed to be is everybody's the everybody's person they that's been rumored to be the prequel for Robert De Niro. Because remember, Robert De Niro's character at the end of Heat, spoiler alert, don't won't make it for a sequel. So do you follow Val Kilmer? Like what how do you how do you do this? How do you tackle this? And Michael Mann has been he, he helped write the sequel. Um, he wrote it with, I'm trying to find the person's name, um, Meg Gar Gardner. So what that's is, what no, is Meg Gardner written? Do we know? Uh, I don't know I if you know. I'm just curious. I don't. I don't. Okay. And that's only because I'm not on my reading. Uh, she's written 16 acclaimed award-winning novels. Okay. Uh, Along the dark Oh, she is a a former lawyer and three-time Jeopardy champion and two-time president of the Mystery Writers of America. Good, hey, good for you, Meg. Got to be excited now. Um, so that's that's one. I, I believe we'll get an announcement for that. It's in the planning stages. That's far off, but I think that's going to be announced. And I don't think we'll get a trailer anytime soon. Do you hear that? I do. Yeah. So for those of you who have kids, sleep regression, it's a thing. That's what happens. Oh. Yeah. So the other one has gone back to wedding himself. So Aww. my life is in hell. Um, uh, actually, um, I go back to that part in Fury Road where Tom Hardy goes, my life is fire. That's my life. Okay. So um, the other movie that I'm excited about that I think they s stopped doing principal shooting is a sequel to a movie that we all know and love that put Russell Crowe on the map, mm -hmm. directed by Ridley Scott, Gladiator 2. Denzel Washington is in it. And I'm like, what the fudge? Uh, according to IMDb, here's the cast. Connie Nelson, Nielsen is back. Pedro Pascal, Denzel Washington, Joseph Quinn, Matt Lucas. Um, you don't know the name, but you know the face if you see him. Peter Minshaw. Uh, he's the black guy who always plays like, did you ever watch the sequel to 300? No. <sighs> but I oh. feel like I know who you're talking about when you said that. Like I can picture the kid. That. Remember in 300, the dude that's, um, old boy kicks in the pit? Uh-huh. The black guy? Him. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's in this. So I like this cast. It can t So basically it follows Lucius. The son, remember the, the remember when uh, Commodus was his sister. Commodus' sister was the one that Maximus loved, but he married somebody else. She had a son. Okay. It follows Lucius, the son of uh, Connie Nielsen. Okay. So I'm really excited about that. I poo pooed on the idea of Gladiator when it came out. I was a hater. Not gonna lie. Um, a friend of mine was like, no, Leroy, you need to see this. And I trusted her opinion. And I was like, I trust you. I'm going to watch it. And we watched it and I was like, God damn, you were right. And, mm -hmm. and ever since then, I love that movie. And 
I'm excited to see those two. The like I'm excited to follow the storylines behind these movies, how they got made, who what characters they're gonna play, how you go forward. Because two these are two of my favorite directors, Michael Mann and Ridley Scott. And Ridley Scott's had some bumps in the road where like some of his movies haven't done as well. Uh Michael Mann has Ferrari. Uh who did going. the alien movie that was really controversial recently? Recently. Which one? Oh, okay. Did really Scott do one of them? Yeah, he did both of them. Prometheus oh, and oh, Alien. Yeah. Rec- uh, okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. Because he's not doing the next one. Got it. So yeah. Um. So I'm really excited to see those fil- those two films and trailers for them. Press junkets. Like I'm really interested to see Denzel back in these days. Like how how like because Denzel don't ever do no bullshit role. So. I'm like, how Denzel no. go bring it a Gladiator two? <laughs> I feel like Denzel does a, and we talk about this. This is a tangent. I would like to see Denzel in like a comedy. I feel like the closest thing we had to a comedy oh, was um, the Devil in a Blue Dress. That's, that's not just a more, Well, I, I mean, Don't that's just more like, just more like they're like funny moments in that movie. Yeah, but yeah, just like I don't know. That's oh, not him, Walter Mosley. So the book, The Devil in the Blue Dress, written by Walter Mosley, he came to Columbia uh, last month or okay. two months ago. Yeah, um, I was at work. I was not able to see him. I was very upset. Hmm. <laughs> uh, we sh- uh, South Carolina Educational Television did an interview with him, and I missed the crew that went to go interview him because I had to do it, uh-huh. but I was on another shoot, and I took a book to work to give to the crew to get him to sign it. But they had already left. I was so upset. Oh man, that sucks. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Can you still? See? Can I Let still see you? Yeah. My... yeah. Uh, hold on. The computer oh, almost. No, I can't see you anymore. <laughs> okay. Let me plug the camera this up real quick, just in case. Hey, y'all. For anybody uh, new to the channel, you know what it is, or you don't know what it is. This is what we do. You know, we try to make uh, content for y'all. Is it always polished? No, but it's it's honest. I'll give you that. And anybody that's been with been with us for a while, you know what to expect. Uh, we do the best we can with what we got. If y'all want us to be better, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe so we get these numbers up, generate that revenue. Um, but while Leroy does his thing, uh, I will say, I think Leroy was kind of done with, oh, man, his whole thing went gone, gone. Let's see if he's coming back. He might be coming back. Yeah, I can hear stuff in the background, so I think he's working on that. Um, I think I'll start with my third thing while Leroy does that. I'm and still here. Me, I'm still he's still strong. here. Okay, still he's still standing. standing. He's still strong, still standing. Um, but you were you were done with your second point, or were you still going on that? I am. I am. I'm done. Okay, cool. So while he's rebooting, doing all his stuff, I will say my third piece, and this is more of something that just kind of came to me, but I'm really excited to see it. Oh, he's like gone, gone. Where I don't know what Leroy no. is doing. Okay. Oh. It's still yeah. here. I'm still here. Okay. Um, I want to see more of an effort from streaming companies to get more diverse media. Um, there we look at them. Nigga, I'm back. Uh, did you did you hear my my overall thing for point three? Like streaming streaming companies go. Yeah, streaming companies to get more diverse media in their catalogs. Uh, people who have followed us for a while know that I. People that follow us for a while know that I really love um, Indians and movies made in the Indian uh, television and film industry. I would like to see other companies dive in, other streaming companies and just media companies dive into that more so it comes to more audiences so we can get more stuff like that. Um, Columbia, where we live, Columbia, South Carolina, uh, capital of South Carolina, but still a relatively small capital city. Uh, so I don't know what it's like in other movie theaters, but over the past year and, and change, some of the movie theaters have started carrying more and more film, like international films that are like made in India, and they're like showing them on primetime screens, which has been great. Uh, it's been a real opportunity to see different type of cinema from other people. I would like to kind of see that happen more because I feel like it gives you an opportunity to see how other people make films in different countries. So that way you're kind of like, oh, this is what they're borrowing from. This is where you're getting whatever. It kind of makes you more cultured, I think. And it just kind of makes you more aware of your surroundings. Um, I've seen some of the best movies ever 
thanks to watching stuff through Netflix and their international film categories. Uh, I won't really name the films because I don't want to butcher the language and the the names are so long that I can't remember all of them. But I mean, it's just been really eye opening to see how those films are made and see how the actors respond. Because when you don't understand the language and all you can do is see subtitles, at least for me, it's it's more interesting to hear how people intonate words in terms of how they speak in their dialect when they're dialogue when they're talking to each other. So it's very interesting to see how they're or to listen to how they're emoting as they tell the story. Um, it's kind of jumbled word salad, but that's all to say I just want to see more diversity, more diversity uh, with streaming companies and how they pick. Uh, now, here's companies. the thing. Here's the funny thing. And this is one of those things where I wish I could explain it a little better because I have read articles on this. So like Disney with Hulu and Disney Plus, because what it so the the version of Disney Plus in other countries or the version of Hulu is called Stars. Or it's it's called it has another name, and I want to say it's stars. So they have a lot of those things that you're talking about on their streaming platforms in other countries for those people. They just haven't integrated that catalog into their streaming services in America. Well, see, so, they, Hulu has integrated because they have, um, it's a subsidiary or I, it's probably an Indian company, but it's called, I think, Hotstar is a company yeah, in India. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you, there, some of that has made its way to Hulu, but I'd like to see more of that happen on Hulu. Netflix has done a good job. I'd like to see them continue to do that. I mean, we talked about it before, but RRR was a huge movie that everybody watched. The mm -hmm. movie won an Oscar for best uh, best song. Um, more of those movies come to uh, Netflix, and then Amazon has done a good job with the uh, uh, the War series. It's about um, essentially Indian special gonna, forces agents. I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna limit and say it's about war. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. It, it's called the war franchise, but it's not necessarily about war. Mm. War stands for something, and I can't remember what it is, but essentially it's like Indian Sneaky Special movie. Forces. Yeah. <laughs> it's essentially Indian Special Force commandos going around just whooping ass. And there's maybe three or four different movies in it. Um, it's got SRK, uh, Saru Khan in it. It's got Amir Khan, mm. and I can't remember the other person who's, who's Shao Khan. Portrayed. Don't do that. Because <laughs> now, now you just sound like a racist asshole. No, no. would you? Because I was gonna do Shao Kahn, and then I was gonna uh -huh. do Shere Khan, and I was gonna see if you're gonna pick up that I was going into Ducktales or um, Tailspin, uh -huh. <laughs> the Tiger. Anyway, but the the two actors that are that are named, I mean, big mm -hmm. stars in India. Um, SRK probably one of the biggest stars in India and globally. People know him, um, mm -hmm. but. Again, it's a word salad, but I just want to see more of that stuff come. We have it on okay. Netflix. We have it on Hulu. I want to see other streaming companies do it because I think if other streaming companies do it, it'll make everybody else step their game up to bring more stuff because then, well, see, then it's the, not just exclusive. Here's the thing. I think I, th I think we are seeing it. It's just going to take a little bit of time only because – how do I say this without offending people? We small, ain't nobody paying attention. Anyway, we are a very ignorant country when it comes remember to Remember this two years from now when we're big. Oh, I, I, I'll still say this, you know, when I'm on, I was about to say Jay Leto. God damn, I'm old. Um, when, you're, when, you're on, when you're on the Graham Norton couch with uh, Halle Berry sitting next to you? Son, I would, I would give a body part to be on Graham Norton. I would. There we go. I don't, there we go. Like, do I need that to hold the put? Okay, I can get, look. Couple of toes, I think Gra Graham Norton. That I'm speaking in existence, 2024. Okay. Anyway, there we go. I think part of the problem is America is so large. We are ignorant to other cultures because our states are the size of countries, and sure. you could drive 500 miles, and you're still in another state. I'm not in another country, whereas in other countries, you drive 500 miles, you're speaking another language, mm -hmm. you're in another time zone. So, like, I think we are very ignorant and bringing that to us is a harder sell than it is in other places. So, perfect example, you talked about bringing 
different cinema from all over the world. Netflix is doing it. Netflix is bringing Korean cinema, Chinese cinema. Um, you talked about Indian cinema. Netflix Perfect is example. Bringing- just to add to you, like like you said, as I was naming all this stuff, you notice I'm mainly stuck to Indian cinema because that's what I know. Again, let me see more stuff. Let me see stuff from China. And I know that's yeah. coming, but so like, do a better job of curating so I can see it more. So like Acorn TV does a very good job of doing British television, Brit Box. Um, uh, Amazon did a very good job. My One of my favorite shows is Fortitude, which is a – damn, don't get me to lying. Uh, I think it's a Norwegian show, but excuse me, Amazon did a very good job of bringing a lot of British TV to Americans before all these other streaming services. Because remember, Amazon is where we discovered Idris Elba was that dude in Luther. Amazon. I thought we, dis- I thought we discovered that in The Wire. We did, but he was a different dude in The Wire. He was Stringer Bell in The Wire, but when he was Luther on Amazon, I mean, Netflix, we were like, oh. Okay. Yeah, we like, like it's, it's levels of this shit. So then remember, Netflix, Broad Church, you know, like we we had, Netflix was is really the, the, the vehicle that's been pushing other streaming services to dip their toe into this because Netflix is like, hey, we got these Americans. We need to conquer other markets. And in order to cover to conquer those other markets, we need to bring in those that that these other iterations of Hollywood in these countries. Perfect example, Dark. OA. Um I'm trying to think of all the other shows. Everybody remembers Squid Game, but Netflix has been doing this since day one, making uh, not just having shows from other countries, putting on shows that were multicultural. Your show, Sense8, mm-hmm. Sense8 went everywhere. Sense8 yeah. was basically the where is the world is Carmen San Diego with just violence. And got, and got canceled. Mm-hmm. So I applaud that. I, I really do like where you're going with that, I, I don't know if it'll happen. Uh, Cause the Zazz, everybody seems to be following what Max has been doing yeah. with canceling shows. Hell, Warner Brothers Discovery, their, mo- their most profitable uh, superhero show or movie last year was Batgirl. Think about that for a second. Their most profitable superhero movie for 2023 was a movie they didn't release. And they tried to do it again with the Looney Tunes movie. And then everybody was like, whoa, 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 time out, time out. We don't care about black women. But you trying to not do this Wiley Coyote movie? Nah, fuck that, son. Run it back. Nope. And so we've seen Disney. Follow the David Zasloff and Warner, uh, Warner the media, the, whatever their name is, follow that model. With remember, Disney Plus took a whole host of things off their streaming service. One of the biggest ones was Willow, wasn't even a year old, and they took that off the streaming service. Mm-hmm. So, I say that to say, I hope that happens, however, comma. I hope it happens. But we're trusting major corporations to invest in brown people. <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm saying. Uh, is this my third? Uh huh. Goddamn comics, son. Son, 2024. So. For those of you who are new to the channel, I'm a big comic nerd. Um, These are the Marvel solicitations for comics that are coming out this year. The Ultimate Universe is back. So this is the solicitation in the previews for Ultimate Spider-Man number one and Ultimate Black Panther number one. Go ahead. I I know a little bit about comics. 
Wasn't there secret wars where they went to like a battle place and they combined all the universes and got rid of yes. the ultimate thing? That was a thing, right? Yes. So and now it's John, back again. Here's the thing. So Jonathan Hickman. And here's the thing that I think is very interesting because it's going to touch on your first. No, your second, your second uh, thing going forward. So Jonathan uh, Hickman, comic writer, South Carolina, Florence, South Carolina. Throw your hands up. Woo woo. Um, <laughs> The MCU has kind of been following a lot of different tendrils, and, John, and a lot of Jonathan Hickman's storylines have been incorporated into the MCU. So you're right. They did consolidate all the worlds, the multiverse, into one 616, uh, into one universe. However, Hickman has been writing and has restarted the Ultimate Universe. Now, the Ultimate Universe, Ultimate Marvel Universe, came about 20 years ago with a writer, Mark Miller and Brian Hitch. The idea was if the Marvel universe started in the, the 2000s, what would it look like? If it started right now, what would it look like? And that's how we got Miles Morales. That's how we got, because he keep, here's the thing. The Avengers and this line of the MCU is kind of based off of a certain parts of what the ultimate, the ultimates and the ultimate line that Mark Miller created with Brian Hitch. Anyway, this new line that Hickman has created, uh, I have the issue right here. Follows a Spider-Man that is married to Mary Jane, which is what comic fans have been looking for. And, oh, here it is. Guess what? I, I don't know. You see that cover? Uh-huh. You see what's next to him? I mean, it looks like children. children. Yep. Mm -hmm. He's happy. He's got kids. So Hickman has restarted the ultimate line and he's restarted with ultimate Spider-Man number one. And the reason why I say comics is because last, like I, I'm a big comic reader. I've read, I, I, I was reading comics last year, but it, I, I wasn't like, I'm not going to say nothing got me, but I've been reading a lot of comics and this year, specifically things happen in comics that I was just like, what the fudge? This is amazing. I'm not going to give, I'm not going to spoil it. Go get issue one. They're reprinting it, but I'm not going to spoil it. But a couple other comics that came out this year and uh, through, so they've restarted the, there's a comic right now called Void Void Rivals. Um, it's from Skybound uh, Kirkman's imprint at Image. It's already out, but Void Rivals is basically the shared universe of Transformers and GI Joe. And the fir this first issue, this is a reprint. This is a third printing. So basically. The issue starts with two people who hate each other. They've been taught to hate each other. They crash land on a planet. They have to work together and get their ship together to get off the planet. The Is last this enemy mine. It's nigga. We here to we twenty twenty four. Like son, <laughs> this yes. like enemy mine. <laughs> it's enemy mine, except the the lizard person is not in this book anyway. Okay. So the two the two people have to work together. As they work together, they find a they find a down spaceship. The down spaceship is fucking jet fire. Okay. And when the book comes out, everybody's like, "Oh, it's a transformer," and that was the launch of the shared universe. So the shared universe is Transformers and GI Joe operate in the same world. Oh, so, so when you when you say Transformers and GI Joes, you actually you actually mean Transformers and GI Joes, not a knockoff. No. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Because when you said that, it's like, are they not going to get sued? But no, it's an actual 
property. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So, so you get Jetfire in the first issue. And then when Transformers comes out, Megatron's nowhere around, Starscream's in charge, <coughs> and you have a select handful of Autobots. So then Transformers comes out. Then they're like, okay, the next two issues that come out is Duke and Cobra Commander. Did you watch the G.I. Joe movie back in the day when they brought in Cobra Law and all that and Sergeant Slaughter and all that stuff? Yeah. They bring that shit back in here. Okay. Yeah. So, like, it's wild. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, comics, a lot of people will tell you comics is all, all this stuff. And that's why I said I wanted to do this episode of Press Play because a lot of people are right. Baby Tashiro said it. There's a lot of people out there who traffic in negative clicks. All they do is hate. I'm here to tell you comics is alive and it's exciting. And there are so many different comics that you should pick up. And that's just one of them. Um, there's a mini series called Avengers Twilight where Steve Rogers gets old. Luke Cage is old. And then the son of Tony Stark and the Wasp, Janet Van Dyne. James Stark. Interesting, his name is James Starks. Whole nother situ a whole nother uh, conversation is a douchebag. And basically, okay. fascism comes to America because the heroes drop the ball. Five issue miniseries. It's an amazing like the issue number one is pretty good. Um, the weatherman, when we went to uh Heroes Con, I met Jody Lahep. He's from South Carolina. He went to the same high school, the writer behind this book, Jody Lahep and Nathan Fox. Um, they wrote this. He Jody wrote this book. He's two years removed from when, guess, guess what high school in the upstate he went to? Or whose high school he went to? Chadwick Bozeman. Oh, okay, cool. So the weatherman picked the I was about, first to, I was about to say Jadavian Clowney. Like, I don't know where you're going with this. Nah, I would talk about a winner. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we positive on this channel, sure. <laughs> okay, sir. I'm a Clemson fan. I had to, you know, I got to get my digs in when I can about the USC. Um, uh -huh. Actually, not USC, South Carolina, because the real USC is in California. Sure. Still coming. Anyway, Jody LaHelp, Nathan Fox, awesome, awesome series. It goes places I didn't expect it to go. It's a very good book. Um, but if you don't want a shared universe for G.I. Joe and you just want the Joes, Larry Hama, one of the original writers behind G.I. Joe, writes G.I. Joe. Here we go. The, it starts with 301 uh, from Image Comics. I am in awe. It is a great book. I mean, it's got Serpentor, Cobra Commander's back. Storm Shadow, Scarlet is uh, with Snake Eyes. I'm talking Spirit, Stalker, Gung Ho, um, everybody. So I say this, and, and keep in mind, there's other books, like right now, perfect example, Thundercats is back from Dynamite. Lilo and Stitch gets a comic. Like, in 2024, and, and I hadn't even got to DC's uh, Superman Bizarro. Seems like we back. should probably have just done an uh, uh, episode just talking about comic books. We can, and I'm excited for that. But anyway, the reason why I said 2024 I'm excited about comics is because a lot of people are negative and they're always like, comics is dying, it's political, it's all this other stuff. No, it's not. Comics are amazing and we need to support comics and, and read what you read what you want but also take a like I'm gonna be honest with you, I wasn't real big on getting back into like I picked up Void Rivals and I was like I I knew like th it was already spoiled for me. Like Transformers is back, it's a shared universe. And I picked it up and I read it. And I was like, yeah. So I was like, I'll pick up the first issue of Duke and Cobra Command. Let me see how it is. And I honestly was blown away. Like, if you're a fan of G.I. Joe and you watch the cartoon, 
you collect the action figures, you will love these series. And I was like, this is what comics is about, getting a book monthly or reading however you want to read it, whether it's digital, getting the physical copy, getting a graphic novel. There's so many different series that are out there. Um, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. I'm The, the Punisher's back. There's a new Punisher. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. With, this, uh, with DC, Superman is back up against Bizarro, and Bizarro has changed. I don't want to spoil it, but Bizarro is a whole different person that Superman is not familiar with, and he is ready to fuck up Superman. And so you've got that. Batman, the Bat family is in a schism because Batman and Catwoman got into a fight and he they basically split the Bat family where Batman used fear toxin on the Red Hood. I say this again, Batman used fear toxin on the Red Hood. One of his adopted children would split the Bat family. Like... And this, these are just the big comic companies. There, there's so many other little books, indie books that are coming out, like I said, The Weatherman, that I just feel like there's a comic for you. And I think going back into these shops, and I, I saw a couple of people I knew when I, I used to work at the comic book store. They used to when you ran one. Anyway. When I saw a couple of them and we started talking comics again and we were just talking about like what books are hot and, you know, what we liked. And it just really got that blood flowing. And I was like, man, I miss that. And that's for 2024. I'm really excited to see what new comics come out and continuing with these stories. Like, you know, do you remember like the bats, the Cobra bats? No, no. The, they were the um, Cobra androids, the robots. Like their chests were exposed. They had like the helmets and shit. Like it's just, it's just so cool to see this stuff and read it at my age and still be like excited to read this stuff again. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm like. I can't, and keep it. And this isn't even going into like this, the fall of Krakoa, the X Men going back to their roots of, oh, the world hates you again and y'all about to be fucked up. Um, you know, it just really is exciting to read comics. And I really hope a lot of people get into it and pick up comics again. Okay. So, yeah, that's why I wanted this, this, this episode to be, I want it to be more about positivity. Okay. Uh, well, I'm positive we're done now because we've been going for an hour. That's all y'all get. That's the, uh, that's, if y'all want more, you gotta, you gotta go to the OnlyFans page. Um, well, you go see these feet. Go see these feet. Fantastic. Somebody clip that out and put that all over Twitter and Instagram where you go see these feet. I posted that one day. Uh, they was like, why do you post memes? Because I don't have the body for OnlyFans and nobody wants to see me. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, what got you through the week? Um... I barely made it through this week, man. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, the promise of seeing Echo finally. I'm gonna watch Flowers of the um, Moon, Killer whatever. Moon. Yeah, sure. I'm gonna try to watch that this weekend. And I've been playing Near Replicant. Um, okay. I can tell this is a 2010 game that's been remastered. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I'm enjoying the game mechanics. But I, I can tell it's an old game. And I'm enjoying it, but I like so that's what's gotten me through the week. And I'm trying to remember what I watched this week. But yeah, that those things and and comics, man. Comics literally got me through the week. Okay. So okay. what about you? Uh Tim Scott endorsing uh uh Donald Trump. Yay, hey, man. <laughs> I work for a news organization, so I'm not gonna say anything about that. Um, but it is what it is. Caught you off guard, didn't it? No. That, that didn't oh, really? I mean, no, I expect that to happen, but that's not, I'm not getting into that here. No, um, I was saying caught you off guard when the press release came through. You're like, I got to add this shit to my show. No. Okay. No. Um, Continue. 
what got me through the week is continuing to play Cyberpunk 2077. Um, I did finish the DLC, Phantom mm-hmm. Liberty. So good. Are you, go- are you going back uh, into the main main campaign now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, I, I, when that came out, I started from the beginning again. And you got to play a little bit before the DLC unlocks. So I did oh. that. Now I'm back, I'm back to the main campaign again. Loving it. It says I put 100 hours into it. I don't know if that's accurate because I don't know if it counts like when I put the game in quick resume mode as time going by. I don't think I played that much. So I'm like fake two. news. I feel like I only play it like two hours at a time, so I don't know if that's possible. But whatever. Anyway, I'm having a good time trying to finish mm-hmm. that up. Uh, I'm playing Judgment. Um, the same people who did the Yakuza series, loving that game yeah. a lot. And what am I watching? I'm excited to finish up the second season of Reacher. The second season. I had to watch the first season. Yeah, second season finale just aired. It would be yesterday when this goes up. Friday. So I got to finish that show. Yeah, it came Excited out Friday. That. And then that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, that's it. Okay. Yep. Oh, excuse me. Oh. Yeah, uh, as you guys are watching this, this is late in the morning, Saturday morning. Uh, as you can hear from the baby crying because uh sleep regression. So yeah, after I get off this, I'm going to finish watching a little bit of Echo. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. I'm going to read a few more comics before I go to bed. Cool. Eat some chicken. But uh, All right. All right. that's Michael. I'm Leroy. This is the We Try channel presented by Nerdy by Nature. Uh, it's 2024. Let us know in the comments uh, what you're excited for for 2024. Like, comment, and subscribe. And we're out. Peace. Peace.